So, last month, we celebrated the 40-year anniversary of the release of one of the most important works in American music. And if you've been to a wedding, a family reunion, a bar mitzvah, or if you've generally been alive for the last 40 years, <laughs> I hope that you've heard this song at least twice. And it starts like this. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try and move your feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I'd like to say hello uh, to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. The song is called Rapper's Delight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I bring that up today, I start with that because obviously uh, there is a very unique relationship with hip hop and flow. And it would be a surprise to no one who knows me that I have a particular relationship to hip hop. So there's two things I want to point out in Wonder Mike's opening rhymes. The first thing is that he says, what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. And the reason he says that is because, you know, this song comes out in 1979, which means that Wonder Mike probably wrote these rhymes in like 77, maybe 78. And at that time, there's no Spotify. Terrestrial radio is king. And periodically, the only non-singing or like non-disc like disc jockey giving away tickets kind of voice you would hear would be these tests of the emergency broadcasting system. So if, say, uh, you know, the, the, you know, we were being attacked, uh, they would cut into your uh, Pat Benatar or whatever you listened to in 1978 <laughs> and say this is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. So Wonder Mike knows that. Wonder Mike knows what you're used to hearing. And so he says, what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. Wonder Mike knows what folks are used to hearing. So what you're hearing is not a test. What you're hearing is change. What you're hearing is the future. The second thing I want to point out, he says, the black to the white, the red and the brown, the purple and yellow. He stretches the word yellow. He changes the word yellow. Why does he do that? Because the flow that he's established dictates that that be done, right? So flow defies expectation while staying consistent. But I want to back up just a little bit. So before I became the producing artistic director of Stage One Family Theater right here in Louisville, Kentucky, I was much like one of the characters in my hit play, How We Got On, which premiered right here in Louisville at the 2012 Humana Festival of New American Plays. All right, yes, yes, okay, all right, I'll take that. Um, and much like the, the main characters, Hank, Luann, and Julian, I was searching for my voice as a storyteller and really just as a, as a human life form. And hip hop culture, and more specifically rap music and poetics, was the vehicle, uh, was the stimulus to set me on my journey. And this journey has led me to you all right now. But just before I was here, a year and a half ago, I was a college professor uh, in Colorado. And I taught, of course, on hip hop. And while we covered the vast cultural landscape and the history of the culture, as you can imagine, my mostly 19 and 20 year old students wanted to know how to rap. <laughs> And here's where we always began, that there are three primary elements that you have to keep in mind. There are three components to being an effective rapper. The first is content. What's your story, what's your perspective? Basically, by and large, what is your mission statement, right? So I, you know, my mission statement is that I am the greatest rapper of any time, and here are all the ways in which I'm gonna prove that to you, right? <laughs> Delivery, how do you say it? When do you take a breath? When do you punch a word? When do you whisper a word? When do you over enunciate? When do you mumble it? And then third and most importantly, the unsung hero of it all is flow. Flow exists in all things. It is a biological reality in all things. Right now, blood is flowing through the universe of your body 
thanks to the constant beat of your heart. Oxygen and information flow exists in all industries, education, manufacturing, and certainly in the arts. But back to rap. In no other genre of music is the word flow so prevalent. Song titles galore have the word flow in them. Rap lyrics galore reference this word flow. A rapper is defined by his or her flow. Lauren Hill, Kendrick Lamar, Snoop Dogg, Run DMC, Migos. If you know anything about rap music, any of those names I just named, you will instantly know how those rappers flow. In over 40 years time, there have been so many innovations in flow. Rappers who defied our expectations with their tempos and their patterns. So for the roughly eight years after Rapper's Delight, after Wonder Mike tells us what we're hearing is not a test, everyone kind of rapped the same, right? It would be the emphasis on the end rhymes and a very <coughs> outwardly facing tone. I am Wonder Mike, and I'd like to say hello uh, to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow, right? Then, thank you. I didn't write those. I didn't write, that's Wonder Mike. That's not me. Um, now, in 1987, a song called Eric B. for President is released, and a rapper named Rakim changes everything. He says, the first lines, he says, I came in the door. I said it before. We're like, okay, this sounds like a rap to me. You know, he split the bar in half, right? He didn't do just the end rhyme. You know, came in the door, said it before. Next line, I never let the mic magnetize me no more. Interesting. So now, splits the first bar in half. Second bar, he's going more traditional. I'm just going to do a full line, the end rhyme at the end, right? But within that, we're getting some alliteration. Mic magnetize me no more. Right? He continues on, but it's biting me, fighting me, inviting me to rhyme. <gasps> now we're getting more internal rhymes, right? He switches it up, came through the door, said it before, right? He's got one syllable rhymes. Now, biting me, fighting me, inviting me. He's using the word me over and over again, and the variation is in the words that come before it. But then he ends the line, totally different assonant sound. Fighting me, fighting me, inviting me to rhyme. I can't hold it back. I'm looking at the line, taking off my coat, clearing my throat. The rhyme will be kicking until I hit my last note. My mind remains refined. All kinds of ideas. Self-esteem makes it seem like a thought took years to build. Okay? <laughs> what? Yo. Okay. This brother, he says, my mind remains refined, which again, just eight years ago, black and the white, the red and the brown, the purple and yellow, and that's not a diss, that song still goes. That song could come on right now and we'd all, everybody get out the seats, right? <laughs> but then, my mind remains refined, all kind of ideas. Self-esteem makes it seem like a thought took years to build. This brother rhymed ideas with years, <laughs> but then goes over the bar line. So he doesn't say, my mind remains refined, all kind of ideas, self-esteem makes it seem like a thought took years. He says, took years to build. I'm just going over that bar line. I don't care, I don't care. And then he picks it up, right? And then, I mean, if you listen to the song on and on, he just picks it up, and it's that kind of, Rakim introduces flow. You know that dynamic? Right, so it used to be content and delivery and like pattern, right? But everybody kind of had the same pattern. Rakim is saying, no, it's, it's all about pattern, my friends. It's all about flow, my friends. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Rakim gets his inspiration from the soloists of jazz. In the song, if you listen to Eric B for president, Rakim calls himself, he says, and you know that I'm the soloist, right? Up to that point, rappers refer to themselves as MCs, they refer to themselves as rappers, he calls himself a soloist, right? Because his ideas of flow come from Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and the freedom which with they move and glide over the trustworthy beat. He defies expectation while obeying the tenets of the genre. But within the confines, he discovers new and interesting ways to operate. When I heard Rakim at age 10, 
there was clearly no, I had clearly no chance at not devoting my life into the deadly wordplay arts. And my education in flow took a major leap uh, from the bedroom of my suburban Detroit house and into the city of Chicago. And inside the walls of Columbia College, I was learning about the history of film and things like that. But outside, in front of Columbia College on Wabash Avenue, various rappers would sort of assemble spontaneously and form a circle. And that circle we called the cipher. And this is where I suddenly was taking the rhymes that I was just doodling with by myself in my room and now putting them into action, working with other voices. The cypher in hip hop is the proving ground, the laboratory for research and development and sword sharpening. So now, we've got content, we've got flow, and we've got delivery. And now, if you should find yourself in a cypher, I'm gonna teach you how to use it. This is called How to Rhyme in the Cypher. You won't be able to spot it but you'll know when it's arrived. It takes three answering each other's call. It don't take much time to accumulate. Three can become 12, can become 30 in seconds. You'll spot the most confident. They'll never let too much time pass before driving spikes into the air, God hands summoning power, punctuating each assonant empire. You'll spot the most Experience, listening, eyes like a falcon, waiting till move to wash away all with the poise of a giant. But as for you, beginner, get in early if you can. Be inside the inner circle, close to the beatboxer. Perhaps there is trepidation because of what the heads and toes carry or what's between your legs or stitched into the full name's lining. But the cipher is infinite enough to stretch a zero. The cipher means nothing. No binary, no accumulation, no waste, no pieces, one unified wheel, no breaks, just movement. So when the ball is yours, don't break. Share a solid eight the first time, premeditated, but incorporate something you see, the street name, the building backdrop, the time of day, better yet, something someone said, but be careful, don't spark a battle, don't talk about anybody's shoes or facial acne. <laughs> Or wait, make your eight specific, universal, funny if you can. But if you're not funny, raunchy. But if you're not raunchy, topical. Or at least just say whatever has to be born and then pass. Let the ball bounce around. When it comes your way again, give them eight more. Loosen up. Not too loose, though. If the most experienced is awakened from slumber, never follow them. Matter of fact, the most experienced will usually close, but not always. Sometimes the ball will keep bouncing, and you should stay there until it is thrown over the fence or deflated. You're there to keep bouncing, to keep throwing energy into the center, staying close to the source, getting loose, huddled into a sacred cluster where the heads concur, saying yes to the nothing from something they built. Thank you. Cypher is the unregulated and improvisational space for the free exchange of ideas and expression. The cypher is where we take risks, we embody our narratives, develop styles, and feed the growth of new culture. The cypher is the basis for everything I do as an educator and a producing artistic director. The tenets are, don't talk about it, be about it. Show up, be present, build relationships through the application of skills. Cypher is where I learn to trust myself and others. It is also where I learn that process is king. As a theater maker, as a writer, as an educator, as a human being, I am entirely devoted to process. And you cannot have process without flow. So I ask you now, in your various fields, what is your content? How do you deliver it? How do you make it flow? The consistent, the metronome, is your mission. But everyone's solo is different. Sometimes switching up your flow goes wrong. Sometimes you fall on your face. 
or the crowd is not, uh, ah, or that. Ah. Sometimes switching up your flow goes wrong. <laughs> Sometimes you fall on your face or the crowd stares blankly, but success is not always defined by the immediate reaction. There's something we call the rewind factor, what keeps us coming back to make new discoveries. Inside the cipher, if you trip or you stumble, you have to recover and keep moving. A river has rocks and waterfalls, but it keeps moving, and it will always come back together at some point. No river flows in a straight line. Flow is natural, tension, dynamics, release, varying speeds, intensity, pressure over the constant and unchanging metronomes. In our work, we are trying to navigate and flow freely over the metronomes of our fields, the metronomes of our challenges, the metronomes of doubt, the metronomes of monotony and mediocrity, the metronomes of misinformation, the metronomes of hatred, of deficit, the metronomes of inequity, the metronomes of ignorance, the metronomes of of insolence, the metronomes of greed. We gotta flow, we gotta flow over these metronomes with our commitment to beauty and truth, our commitment to exploration and innovation, the constant beat of your heart pumping passion and dreams, inspiring the lyrics you live every day. Who's in the cipher with you? How do they flow? How do they recover when they stumble? How do they triumph? And now, it's on you. You gotta tell the world what they wanna hear. Thank you. <clears throat> so there's two parts to this, okay? So that was like part one. I wanted to like close on like a nice, right? <laughs> But obviously, you're wondering, yeah, that's all fine and good, good one. Talk about your Rock Kim. Talk about your Snoop Dogg. Talk about your Wonder Mike. But what about you, Idris, good one? Do you be writing the raps? Can you spit these bars? <laughs> what about you, Hammer? Can you flow? <clears throat> no, I can't. No, I'm just playing tight. My literature consists of ligaments from different body parts, all Frankenstein stitched up with skin as the body art, artifact making mixing facts with the unseen, four fingers, one ring, my thumb does the posing, no gunting, no one thing, I multiple, I multiply, colorful overground or underground or running hide from the sunny side, heels gated, bills paid, ordinance debated from the gentrified, terrified, I'm a regular ordinary, fella disorder heavy, minded and delighted by the methods of street profits, reminding the giants that they can't always beat hobbits average every day say what I want to say I take the trash to the curb I chop the wood with the axe I read a book on the porch not the vibe or the source I scream into the mic until the mic get hoarse and I drive a used car not a Porsche and I participate in the beat poetical stereo I'm in the sonic homages that's infiltrating the populace chopping screwing undoing deleting repeating competing defeating igniting I make the mundane exciting I know devils, demons, angels, and the in-between. No saint, no priest, and I sure ain't a Mr. Clean. I ain't a killer. I entertain like Benverine. When I was a kid, all I wanted was a submarine. Now I want to live inside a dub machine. From the gut uncut is such a lovely scene. And cut that video screen with the silly preteen. With the grown man bling sipping bubbly things. I freestyle in the grocery store. Pay attention to what most never noticed before. New myth, new lore. Old fist, old law. Same big daddy cane tape. 88 raw. I'm a regular order. Ordinary. Fella that's sort of heavy minded and delighted by the ways of the radical. I bees on it every day, no paid sabbaticals. I'm average normal, I keep it informal. I visit your middle school, I keep a small social pool. I listen to Dell on the train, not the consent of the game. Guy with a microphone, simple and plain. I drive a used car, not a plane. <laughs>